For the, the last one of the special senses, we're going to talk about the ear. Uh, to me, the biggest stuff we're going to be actually focusing on is going to be some of this internal ear, but I would like you to know some of the other structures and what's going on there. Uh, the outer part of the ear is called the auricle or pinna. Uh, that is actually this part right here. Uh, if you actually look at it on the picture right there, you can see where the EC is on that one there. That's that elastic cartilage that's making up a lot of that structure. Uh, we then have the ear canal or auditory meatus, which is going to be lined with some of this cartilage as well as glands that are going to uh, secrete earwax. And that is going to end in what is called the eardrum or tympanic membrane, which separates the, really the external ear from the, the middle ear. So the middle ear is an air-filled cavity behind that tempo, uh, excuse me, the tympanic membrane. Uh, going to be lined with simple cuboidal and squamous epithelium. There is actually an opening to the throat region through what's called the eustachian tubes. Uh, this helps equalize pressure on both sides of the tympanic membrane. The other thing we'll find in the middle ear is going to be the three auditory ossicles, which are the, the smallest bones in the body. These take the vibrations from the tympanic membrane and transmit them to that cochlea, which is going to house the actual structures for the uh, reception of sound. So in the internal ear, we're going to have these cavities. And what you really have is you have a bony kind of circle like this with uh, really a membranous tube kind of traveling through the middle of it like this. So when they talk about the outer opening, that is that osseous labyrinth, the cavity, and it's filled with paralymph. You're going to have this membrane kind of going through the center of it that is also filled with fluid called endolymph. And we can really talk about this inner ear in three main regions. You have the vestibule, the semicircular canals, and the cochlea. Uh, vestibule is doing uh, static equilibrium, head position. Uh, semicircular canals are that dynamic equilibrium, many of those rotational movements. So when you spin around in a circle and get dizzy, that's because of the semicircular canals. And then finally, the cochlea is where we house the receptors for hearing. So if you're looking at this picture on the right right here, this is kind of combining the membranous labyrinth is going to be the green part. And it, as you can see, it's surrounded by that blue part, which would be part of the osseous labyrinth. What this is, is there's a tube going out to the end of that cochlea and then working its way around that membranous labyrinth. The outgoing is that scala vestibuli, goes out to a point and then back through the scala tympani. Uh, then you have the membranous labyrinth in the center of that. Uh, you can see the bacillar membrane is going to be this area right here. And this whole structure right here is what we refer to as the organ of corti. So this organ of corti, like I said, this is showing you the membranous labyrinth. So the whole area within this would be that membranous labyrinth. You have the bacillar membrane, the other membrane right here, scala vestibuli going out, scala tympani coming back right here. The main thing that is to kind of point out here, we have this kind of tongue-shaped structure called the tectorial membrane. This is kind of setting on top of these hair cells, so you can see the inner as well as the outer hair cells right here. They have these, what are actually called kinocilium. It's kind of like a cilia, kind of like a, like a large microvilli. This tectonic membrane is sitting against those. When sound vibrations travel, it causes that bottom membrane to kind of bend and pushes these hair cells up into the tectorial membrane. That is what's going to bring about a nerve impulse and is going to cause you to perceive sound. So we can see it here, kind of zoomed in in the real, real life there. So you can see the TM in the top image is that tectorial membrane. You can see the outer hair cells are the OH and the IH is going to be the inner hair cells on this particular image. It's that base, that ba the bacillar membrane pushing these hair cells up into the tectorial membrane that is going to trigger the sound response. And then you can see that ganglia is all these cells that are the SG right there. But to me, tectorial membrane, inner and outer hair cells, uh, bacillar membrane, scala vestibuli, scala tympani, those are the type of things that I would expect you to be able to identify. And again, we'll look at them with a slide in just a minute here. So this is probably the most zoomed in I can get you of that one here. So again, you can see the tectorial membrane. 
You don't really see the villi coming up from the hair cells, but you can see the outer and inner hair cells. And then, like I said, that bacillar membrane. And again, it's pushing extensions of those hair cells up into the tectorial membrane that generates the nerve impulse that is going to cause you to perceive hearing a sound. So again, really for all these ones here, number of different organs, a lot of them function in similar ways. The main thing to take home from all these different types of special senses is all of them, some type of stimulation, be it light on the retina, be it vibrations on the hair cells, be it a molecule binding to a receptor, all of them lead to a change in that cell and cause an action potential to be fired in the nervous system and sent back to the brain. Uh, like I said, learning how each of these things work a little bit lets us understand a little bit better how we perceive the world. And like I said, again, if we were doing a little bit more physiologists, we could get into how all this works. But for histology, it's really just about you being able to identify and understand at least what these cells look like and have a basic understanding of what they're doing. So here we have an, the ear. This is actually the inner ear. Like I said, I'm not too worried about showing you some of the other structures. This is the main structure we're going to identify when it comes to uh, the histology of this. A lot of times, this upper portion right here, where I have the cursor right now, that's what they refer to as the spiral organ. When you think about the cochlea, think about it being like a wrapped bun or like a snail shell. It starts at the bottom there, and it's going to wrap its or spiral its way up to the tip. Uh, what we can kind of see is throughout this is that osseous labyrinth and that membranous labyrinth in the middle of it. So if we kind of look at one of these ones right here, this would be scala vestibuli, scala tympani, and then you can see the membranous labyrinth is going to be this portion right there. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, I think center in on this region right here. So this is showing you the actual organ of corti. Uh, again, scala vestibuli, scala tympani right here. We have this bacillar membrane which separates those two. And above that we can kind of see, here would be the inner hair cells, here would be the outer hair cells, and this little pink structure right here is going to be that tectorial membrane. Again, it's deformations in that bacillar membrane that push the hair cells up into the tectorial membrane that are going to be causing those nerve impulses to be generated. You can see this is that vestibular membrane up here separating this membranous labyrinth, which is this region, from the osseous labyrinth, which is going to be this much larger region surrounding that. And this again was that spiral ganglion where all those cell bodies are going to be that are going to help send those messages back to the brain that are coming from these receptor subtypes.